Welcome to the video on pumping 971. This is one of our arsenal and our many engines in Genesee Fire. This one is very particular because it's called a quint, and that's because we have our 75 foot ladder here. Now there's going to be some very common technique on pumping compared to 31 in the other engines, and there's going to be some unique to it. So what I plan on the video is talk a little bit about both, run you through the sequence of getting this up and running, get water to your crew very simply, and then we're going to come back and do the details on it. So just a few words about 71 itself as far as the differences. It is a quint, it is a truck, but I'm going to refer to it as an engine, just so that it's just common with all the other engines. This particular engine is over 54,000 pounds and over 12 feet long, so it's a hunk of engine. So where does that bring us as far as what we need to do in our philosophy? Well, during our common philosophy, we have positioning, and that's water supply for attack and defense, water relay, and external water supply to the engine itself. The 971 only carries 450 gallons worth of water, and we have a master stream up here that flows 1,000 gallons a minute that we normally run around 850 gallons. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, this engine is heavily dependent on external water supplies such as a hydrant or a relay. So why don't we get what started? Do now is just do a really quick step through the actual sequence and the technical portion of just pumping this on the most simple basic level. So when we roll up on scene, the first thing we're going to do as we do it in all our engines, we're going to set the parking brake and we're going to put it into neutral. This is a mid-shift transfer that takes the power from the engine and places it into the pump. So we actually have to turn the pump on inside the cab. So first thing we do, set our parking brake, which is up there. We set our neutral from our transmission controls and then we place our foot on the brake because we're going to actually have to put into drive eventually to drive the engine to drive the pump so we must have our foot on the brake or we may lose control of the engine once we do that we have our air actuated transfer from our drive wheel to our pump from our engine power so in the upper position right here, we see this is our pump shift. We pull up on the lever and we bring it down and you hear the air actuate. That just disengaged the drive wheels from the engine. We want to wait till that those one or two seconds so that we don't grind the gears. And then we bring it all the way down and that now engaged our engine power to our pump itself. And our lights will come on showing that our pump is engaged. As we come back, and we leave the cab, we want to chalk our tires because we don't want the engine rolling away from us. But if we wanted to, and this is up to the you, but I highly suggest that you open tank the pump as long as you're going past the pump panel, right? This will now bring water into the pump because we already actuated it. So we're running a dry pump at this time. I would definitely take the time from opening this up to going and chalking. Once we come back to this, we now have to prime our pump. And this is our primer up here. This is an electronic piston primer, so you can only run it for about 30 seconds before it starts to overheat. When you prime this, you eventually see some overflow come out of the bottom, which shows that our pump is full of water. At that point, we come to our control panel that monitors our pump pressure, and we hit the mode switch. And this is very common to our other engines, 31, 32, we all have this. You should become familiar with this. Once we hit the mode, it's going to default to PSI. And that's pounds per square inch. And normally run almost all our operations through PSI. At this point, we're going to see if we prime properly, our pump discharge jump up to about 50 PSI, because that's normally what it runs at idle while we're running off tank. So at that, we're then going to uh, hit our preset, and our preset will bring us up to operation pressure, which is about 150 on this engine. And we'll see our master discharge come up to 150 here. At this point, any type of line that we open, we can gate down for whoever's on the knob 
and what type of control we want here at the discharges themselves. But we can always keep this at 150 if you wish. Okay? Always control your hose lays from your pressures here and leave your master uh, at its top pressure or close to top pressure in case we're running multiple lines. At this point, we're going to be watching our water levels because if we're running off tank, we only have a couple minutes, anywhere from 30 seconds to five minutes, depending on what we're flowing. And we want to make sure that we switch over to our external water source, which is going to most likely be a hydrant. So we have our LDH coming in. We have our master control for the driver's side here. We have our master control for the officer's side. On the other side, we bring our LDH in and you as a DO will hook it up because that's your responsibility. We'll start opening it up and you'll see it go from red, which means closed, to yellow, which is partially open, to green, which is fully open. And as you're pushing this up, and this is open the internal valve for the LDH to bring in water from the hydrant, you will see this manual valve spinning. If you want to have a little bit more finesse on this, you don't have to do it by this, you can do it by this. But there's a lot of turns, probably about 22 of them, just like the hydrant of this. At this point, as your water valve opens up and you bring in from the hydrant, you'll see the pump and take pressure, which is basically your hydrant pressure, come up here. So, at that point, if you do it and regulate this on a moderate level, not too quick, then hopefully as your hydrant pressure comes up, you won't jump more than 20 PSI on this. But the engine is going to self-regulate it anyways. At this point, you're going to be switched over to your hydrant and you'll be flowing out to your cruise. And this is a very good time, as soon as you can, top off your tank. Because if you lose this water supply, you already burned through some water when you're going off the tank before you got to the hydrant. So you want to make sure that if you lose this water supply, you have a full tank. So you come up to your tank fill, open it up, and you'll see the water lines start coming up. You'll see your exterior lights also show that your tank is being filled. And when your tank is filled, you'll see discharge through the rear. It just starts splashing onto the ground. So now you're all set, your tank is filled, your crews have water, and you have your hose lines and your tank pressure all regulated. When you get done, you want to shut this down. If the tank fills, just close this off, right? You don't want to shut off your tank to pump. Now you're going to shut off your outside hydrant if we're going to shut the engine down. Then before we shut this down, we go back to the cab because you don't want to run your tank dry. We get into the cab, we put our foot on the brake, we put it back into neutral because it wasn't drive before, which was driving the... And it'll be in this position. We bring it to the middle position, count two seconds, bring it up to the top position. And this is all done in neutral. If you do it in neutral, you will not grind and wear the gears of the transfer case. At this point, you're shut down. So now that we explain the most basics of pumping 971, I'm going to get in the engine, it's like we're rolling up on scene, and we'll just go through it. Then when we're done, we'll talk about the fine details. Fair enough. Put my parking brake on. Put it in neutral. Keep my foot on the brake. Come down, switch down. Disengage the rear drive. Engage the pump. A couple of seconds in between. Pump is now hit drive. Just heard the pump engage. Lost the helmet. Two points of contact. Tank the pump open. Cross-time reels. Close on the downhill. Why my <laughs> Hit my mode. Go to PSI. We're now constant at 40, we're good. At this point, hit my preset. It takes a moment on 71. But you'll hear a ramp up. We're set at 150 on our preset. I just sent my crew in on the back discharge, two and a half to lay a line. So, I'm at 150, passenger rear discharge, Come in. 100 pounds. 
150 here, 100 there. If you take a look, you see the water is coming out. That's good. At this point now, I'm burning through my can. So I want to switch to my hydrant. Okay? Because I've already lost a quarter in that last minute. So I'm going to come over to my bleed valve. My hydrant's hot. PSI. When we started this off tank, we were at 50. The reason why we're at 100 now is because we have a hot hydrant coming in, and that's what's driving this pressure. The minute that we close down the hydrant and we open one of our valves, it'll drop back down to 50. So we got a full tank, right? We're secure. If it doesn't close down all the way, take your rubber hammer. Then it down. And then you turn it, it pulls it all the way. Now we're going to turn this down. Close off the hydrant, still got my tank to pop open. And if I was sitting here idle for a long time, I could open my recirc valve and that'll keep the engine cool. So I'm going to close my hydrant. We're at yellow. And we go to red. We're totally closed. As you see, our pump intake just dropped down to zero as far as our hydrant supply. I'm now going to go shut it off in the cab. Leave this open so we're still running. Put my foot on the brake. Take it out of drive. Put it back into neutral. If I don't do that, I'm going to shear the gears. You just heard the neutral, you just heard the engine go down to slow idle. Bring it to the middle position, wait count of two seconds, bring it to the upper position. We are now having the engine engaged to the rear tires if we need it. We have now completed pumping 971. This is down and dirty of pulling up, getting the pump started, and shutting it down. So right now, let's go through the details of it, give you some ideas of what the controls look like, and talk about a little bit of the finesse on something goes right or something goes wrong, okay? So let's start inside the cab. When you first roll up, you're gonna have to put your parking brake on. And you're gonna have to shift it from drive into neutral. Once you do that, you gotta make sure that you keep your foot on the brake. And then we come down to the pneumatic shift to do our, from our rear drive wheels to our pump. You pull up on the yellow, you bring it down, you can hear it engage, and then once you hear that, then you can go down lower. Now that is now putting the engine power to the pump itself. These two lights will come on, showing that you are pumping. And at this point, you wanna put it into drive so that you can engage the pump, because if you're neutral, it won't engage, and then you can get out of the cab. About now we're going to go the details of the panel itself. We only covered a small part of it to get the pump running. The first thing is this. Let's talk about locations. Your main two gauges that show the quality of your pump itself is what your pump is discharging at, and this is in PSI, 
and what the water pressure coming into the pump is. By any chance, you come back and you go through the sequence and you hit your mode and it comes up to PSI and you have primed it properly, but you see no pump pressure coming up, most likely you forgot to put it into drive. You're still in neutral. So if you do that, you gotta go back to the cab, put it into drive. So that's that. You always wanna keep your pump pressure at a, at a level that will keep all your discharges running and then control the discharges individually to whoever's on the end of the hose. So if you're running, let's say the front bumper line, you probably don't wanna go past 80 PSI, 80 gallons of, or 80 PSI on that particular hose, but you might wanna flow 120 to 130 to up to the master stream. So keep your master pressure here, control your hose lays here. As far as your hose lays are, con are concerned and your discharges, you have your cross lays, and then you have your discharges that wrap all around this engine. And if you take a look on the left side here, this is your foam paddle. Your foam, you can turn on, and you see that it's on the flow meter right now. That flow meter will show you how many gallons per minute that you're flowing only out of your discharges that carry foam. So that's basically your cross lays and your front bumper line. So if you're not pumping foam, but you're going off the tank, and you're flowing your front discharge line, per se, and you're saying, I'm flowing 80 gallons a minute according to this, then you know you basically have about five and a half minutes on your tank before you have to be over to an external water supply. And you must remember that the safety of your crew is paramount. Don't let your tank run dry. Don't let somebody be on the end of the hose that does not have water. So call them back, retract them prior to that. As far as your other controls, these are controls for your LDH on the other side. They work just exactly as they do on this side. These are your drains here. This is your master drain for your driver's side. This is your master drain for your officer's side of your large intake. When you're bringing water in from the hydrant, you got to drain the air out of it. So you don't push that air into your pump and cause cavitation. And you'll see the air spurt out the bottom on either side. And then you'll see a pure water supply flowing out of it. And at that point, just close it down. It's a quarter turn to the left to open this and a quarter turn to the right to close it. Okay? So other than that, we have our controls for our aerial devices and our discharges and our other drains. All that stuff can be covered on another video, right? And we'll make sure, make sure you get that. And the very last thing I want to say about this is that we really appreciate the time that you're putting into becoming, you know, a driver operator. This is your first step into responsibility. You're going to have an engine and a crew that you are responsible for. And it's a huge step and it's a great thing to do. Learn your stuff. Ask questions. So the very best.